Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Hey, Christmas. Hey, what? No, Mary. For those who have lost so much, maybe the most we can muster this year is to drop the Mary of Merry Christmas and just say, Christmas. For too many this year, the wood of the manger became the wood of the cross. Christmas, so how you doing? I've taken to answering that question this Christmas with COVID fine, COVID fine. No sense in rehashing, I guess, all the same woes you also would rehash. Though some days the crosses we share in common rise to the surface in different ways and with different intensities. Almost any issue at one level or another, we could say, been there, done that. Yet, we are in it together, and it is healing to hear that, to remember that. Shared crosses are way lighter to bear than when we feel it is just me suffering this. Hence the infinite value of grief groups and AA meetings and liturgies of lament and church communities and stations of the cross. I asked a woman not too long ago whose husband had just died two years earlier what I should be preaching on these days. Without skipping a beat, she said, disappointment. How to handle disappointments. So many things I've looked so forward to, only to see each and every one of them get canceled. That's so hard for me, she said. Our students would echo that. Graduation last May, canceled. And a whole formal fun, fresh, normal fun freshman year, canceled. Classes in real classrooms with real human beings sitting alongside them, canceled. Sports, Greek life, roommates, canceled. And weddings and even funerals, canceled. Christmas? Shall I go on? One thing that should never be canceled is the attitude of positivity. If we are to come out on the other side of all this, we have to remain and grow in positivity. I don't know if you've been surprised these last months at how positive, how up you have been, or as a matter of fact, how down you have been. But we can learn about ourselves a lot these months and do some attitude tweeting or tweaking for our own sake and the sake of those we love. One does not cancel the other. They live together, the ups and the downs. So what is your biggest cross this pandemic Christmas? Where this Christmas has the wood of the manger become the wood of the cross for you? As I read the signs of the times, we're in a period of negativity and there's some good reason for that. There really is. But Christmas poses the reasons we have for enticing, enticing positivity out of the shadows. We can reframe any experience in a new light. Well, there's that. Yes, and in some ways we have become numb and negative. What else could go wrong? And... There's that too, that silver lining. Wait, there it is. If we don't pick up on reasons for positivity, we start to wither. So does our ability to generate possibilities. The lid comes down and the walls draw in. We don't have to bleep the hard stuff in order to take in the light. 
in order to be positive. Yet, we might have to dig deeper this Christmas for the gold in all this. Positivity is an act of resistance to numbing circumstance. It is an act of resistance to be positive, to be positive in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of politics as usual, in the midst of crazy economies, racial strife, closed businesses, and empty churches. What is this positivity? Is it just another feel-good thing? Is religion tossing us a bone this year to inoculate us against reality? No. This is not a soft and fluffy thing. This takes hard work, and it takes practice. Practice at home, practice in your community, practice at work. But we know now, through extensive research, we know now that this is beginning to reveal that positive thinking is so much more than just being happy or displaying an upbeat attitude. Positive thoughts can actually create value in our lives and can help us build skills that last much longer than that smile. Positivity leads to possibility. It yields a plethora of creative solutions to those disappointments, to all that ails us. It is a sense that we can do this, that we can stay resilient through challenges and struggles. By adopting this positive mindset, our resilience increases and with it our capacity to explore the world while feeling confident and secure Negative thoughts and emotions, on the other hand, can skew our perspective and in the long term damage our self-esteem. We faced a hell of a lot of adversity in 2020. Today will not be the last time for us. The skills we have developed, the attitude we have had to take on to survive and flourish and make it through all these disappointments, will come in handy in our futures where we will for sure face adversity again. The skills we've developed these months will come in handy for our futures. There is no immunization against adversity. As difficult as this year has been, it is not the last time we will face those difficulties. A positive attitude is the only possibility it was only a possibility if it includes disasters, grieving, sadness. I have to identify and accept the painful emotions first before I can make the move towards positivity. We can extract meaning, meaning from the worst days. We can always extract meaning from the worst of days. How do you want to come out of this pandemic? Now is the time to think about an attitude adjustment, perhaps long overdue. Is it time to change what you believe about life? After all, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. How we see the world depends on how we see God. The future of the world does not depend on our faithfulness. The future of the world depends on the faithfulness of God. If we trust, if we trust that God is faithful, we will have every reason to respond with positivity and that will yield potential and possibility. If all this depends on our faithfulness, we are hosed. But if we let it all depend on the faithfulness of God, this Christmas matters more than ever. Christmas is a story of a mom and a dad and the birth of their baby. 
Tell me, how did Mary and Joseph stay positive with one disappointment after another? It's because they trusted in the faithfulness of God to them and the faithfulness of God to their people and to all the world. The church will not let us forget that as cynical as we all can be right now and under too many disappointments, the universe still makes rainbows. Clouds still have those silver linings. And if that sounds at all dorky, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just good science and real faith. Christmas signals are being sent from the depth of reality that there are reasons in life to still be positive. Nature, family, friendships. But sometimes our receptors are clouded over. Our receptors are not receiving the signals that are being sent from the heart, the core of life. And we collapse into negativity. Christmas undergirds all this. It undergirds our lives. Christmas gives us a reason for a confidence in life, no matter what. In that first Christmas and still, yes, even in this pandemic Christmas, God speaks and God says, it is good to be here. God is saying to this pandemic crushed world, it is good to be here. For me to be here. Therein lies our reason for positivity in everything we do without exception. God is here, this Christmas shouts. God is here. And if we can say it in this pandemic Christmas, we'll start to feel something turn inside of us toward the light. Jesus was not going to waste a second in holding grudges and in self-pity in negativity, not a second. Jesus always kept his eyes on the goodness of people, even when so many turned on him. Remember the story of Anne Frank, a young Jewish woman, barely a teenager, hiding in a small closet with seven other members of her family and another family for two years. In the end, all but her father were executed, including her. In the end, she herself died in a concentration camp at just the age of about 16 of typhoid that she caught there. But in one of the closing conclusions of her diary that she scribbled from that place where she could only see out a window of one tree for two years, she still could write, In spite of everything, I still believe people are good at heart. But I wonder. Truly, religious people tend to be more positive people. Notice I said truly religious people. Because people who are simply religious who did not take the deep dive dive into spirituality and attend to their relationship with the divine, they tend to be as negative as the rest of the world. And so us. Let's see in the mystery of God with us a huge God's thumbs up to the world, to life, to the life we are even stuck with right now. This is my sign for Christmas this year for myself. Even if I'm not in the mood, even if I'm lonely and I'm quarantine bored, I can still live with and from this underlying stance, this mindset, this positivity, that no matter what befalls me, I will at the very least give this thumbs up to my life. I tend to be a positive thinker. People tell me that, at least. He think, I think that is what helps me most in difficult situations. And it's one of the best gifts I can give you and I can give our students. And I learned it right here. I learned it right here in this book. 
story after story of people who overcame incredible obstacles and stayed positive because they trusted in the faithfulness of their God, not their faithfulness to God, but the faithfulness of their God to them. And personally, I saw it lived out in a woman I'm proud to call my mom. She was, the greatest gift she left me from her life and through her death was positivity. I was raised by a mom who was and continues to be the most positive, the most up person I've ever met. She came near death when I was barely five, and after a year of being paralyzed, physically distanced from her husband and her two sons, she emerged this person with this incredible attitude that I can only hope to emulate. She did not deny the pains and sufferings of life, yet she refused to waste a second of her life feeling sorry for herself, down and out, lamenting, needing attention, somber. And I have to say, when life for me in the seminary got tough, and it was not being good, or even in those first 10 years before she died, when I was in a parish, my first parish ever, in those first 10 years when I didn't know what I was doing, I would find myself gravitating toward home, even if it was just to take a nap on my day off. Just being around her, proximate to her, helped me up. While she was dying, I realized it is for me now to find that positivity not from her outside of me, but from me, from the inside out. I think they call that growing up. If you have a friend who can be positive about you even when you can't, you have just struck gold. My friends, let's end this pandemic well. Let's end this pandemic with more than a whoo. Let's end it with inspiration breathing deeply of an uninfectable air, seeing new possibilities all around us, proud of ourselves for not giving up, running the last mile as if it were the first mile. Even though it is inevitable that the wood of the manger becomes the wood of the cross, it's not the end of the world. It is the beginning of a whole new world. Let's Christmas.